Yo, Nitrom, sir, grum, rum, rum. What? I was trying to say your name backwards there. Martin. Okay. Martin, you there? Martin? Come back to the light, Martin. Um, Anna, are you there? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, Mitta, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Bill, are you there? Yep. I just heard a car come in. Um, so, uh, Martin, you're there? <laughs> Martin? Martin? Uh, Martin? I heard the dog. So let me add him. Someone can't. Someone says they can't hear. Martin says he can't hear. Hello. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I hear you, Bill. I don't hear Martin though. Okay. Martin, we're gonna continue. Try to try to come in uh, again. Okay. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Let's continue here, Bill. All right, go ahead. Can you see the screen awesome. now? I can see it now. Thank you. Yeah, it's up now. Thanks. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Now speak. <laughs> oh, 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 no, we won. Rue three. Um, you know, just messing around with it. The diagonals, everything seems to be okay. I liked it. Um, question about if I'm working on the beard at the bottom, how would I show the neck? Well, you already have the neck there, don't you? Well, the dominant vertical. Yeah, right there's the neck. Oh, actually, okay, right and there. Then, okay. And then you have the beard. You probably want to bring the beard up into the face a little bit somehow. Okay. Maybe, maybe um, come down to right where this this lip is. Come down uh -huh. to there. Uh huh. And then come down to where this lip is over here. And then you can go up. Oops. How rude. Bring that chin up into there then. Okay. And then bring this vertical down like you have it. What I see now is the cheeks are in different on different um, height. Yeah, that he fixed that on the um, on the other one. Oh, okay. So like this one here, you see how he up makes that cheek go higher. <laughs> you there, Martin? Martin. So so Victor, all the rectangles which we see in this these are root three. <laughs> Uh, on this one, it is a root three. So the one around the lips, that that's a root three, right? Is that a root three? Um, the rectangle itself is probably two overlapping root threes. Okay. 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 So none of the rectangles are actually root three rectangles. Okay. But the gamuts 
that come from the root 3 rectangle, all these lines extend from the root 3 rectangle. I understand. I understand. Thanks. Yep. So we're going to move that one to the top. We're going to talk about that one a little bit. Um, here's a very similar one to we, that we went over. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this one has it has you know more uh, it's more energized because of the sharpness of the features, especially on the left cheek. But um, it's a different it's a different feeling, a different image. Yeah. She's like, they're coming for me. <laughs> yeah, and and in this one, the the beer concept. You know, the way it's set up now doesn't work as well as the other. No. I think the beard has to go vertical. It has to go yeah. down. Mm -hmm. If it comes out, it kind of repeats the shape of the, the head, and, and then she becomes something. She becomes yeah. almost like a clown, almost. Yeah, it's it's uh, a dunce hat. Yeah, yeah. With, like, you know how also, like, how with the big collars, it kind of starts to feel like, like a big collar, not a... It doesn't add to her dominance. It, it just kind of no. It's it's a distraction. Yeah. I like this one a lot, man. Well, that's thank you. That's that's the the rough. <laughs> yeah, I like the fact that the back of the head here. The ear actually, out of all of the images, the ear feels the best in this one. Mm -hmm. um, I like how this comes in. This isn't one straight line. It's actually three. Three right. Four different sli slight angles. Right. Um, I think with this cheekbone, this needs to come out to up up to this line or out, and I think you realize that, and then in the later ones you did that. But I really like the nose, the lips. Um, these cheeks are coming in nice. The eyes are getting big, nice. I think my favorite part is I think this curve is the most beautiful curve out of all of them uh, that I've seen so far. And I like how you have it, an, um, an enclosure coming down through here, so that you could actually have that curve. Who's making that noise? <laughs> yeah, I, I just went back to basics, and I started, you know, in the square, and you can see that because I wanted to. I think that was the easiest way to do it. Oh, okay. I see you made this rectangle there. Um, yeah. So, so that's a really nice element if you can bring that enclosure in but um but that's for another lesson for another day okay and then Ew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very, very big difference dude yeah so the, this is the phi this is um this is a phi as well yes it is but you, for some reason, it's very, very different. Because you have this draw coming out here, I think. Let's see. Yeah, well, this this, coming out. this this one right here was done like probably like after it was done after this one. Okay. This is like an earlier piece. Why is my? Hey, Martin, are you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Good. Everybody's here then. Okay. Um. All right, Bill. So. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and put uh, two or three of these next to each other, and then we'll open it up for some combo sessionis, okay? Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to pick the ones. That I think are your three. Most powerful. So new moving my cosmic to Dakas or Dakas. Okay. I'm starting to levitate now. <gasps> Alright, so those are some gorgeous looking ladies. No, I'm sorry. Um <laughs> <laughs> Bring your beard here. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Let's start with uh, Mitta. Mitta, 
Um, out of the three, which one do you like the best? Uh, what do you like about one versus the other, or whatever, whatever comes to you? And also, if you find one or two things that you would do to improve it, what are, what are your thoughts? Um, I, I think I like the last one, uh, the one on the on the rightmost. Yes, that one. Um, I, I think the ears, the nose. Uh, and the lips, it look more in line or in proportion to me in that. Um, even I think the beard fits nicely. Hmm. So that's, the, that's the one I like. Um, I don't think I, I have the capability to kind of tell you what more can be improved in this. I'm just looking at them and just telling you which one looks best to me. Fair enough. Um, very cool. Is the last one of uh, five? Five. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it looks it it looks very balanced and proportional to me in that one, and I think I I get that arc and that uh, arc. I think it adds a very nice touch. Um. Mhm. Mm cool. Uh, Martin, what are your thoughts? Uh, I like parts and pieces of all three. Mm -hmm. um, I like the eyes in the first one, the lips in the second one, and then the complete structure of the third one. I like how it's all, it, it, it looks like it fits more to the grid. Um, yeah, but I know ultimately it's going to have to be Bill's choice, you know, I mean, what, what is, you know, what do you, what do you want, Bill? Which one do you um, like, Bill? <laughs> well, you know, I like to say this parts of all that look good. I like the face in the last one the best, but it doesn't work with the beard. Unless. Oh. Victor. Got the beard down? Yeah, why don't we do the same thing on the last one we did on the first one with the beard? Mm -hmm. Just do it vertically and not trying to make it a, di uh, uh, yeah. a diagonal. Yep. I also agree. And so we'll go from this point here, drop it down, mm -hmm. and then uh, let's try to see if we mimic that where that brings us. So we might have to actually make that a little bit bigger. Wider? Or, or wider. But I want to try to find an angle that works. Well, that, that if you go with the, the, the cheek, the cheek line there. This one here? No, next to the ear. No, this one? Right. Try that line going down. Is that the same line as here? It, yeah, it parallels it, yeah. That's interesting. So if we go here. To the ear. And bring it up into the back of the ear, maybe. And then we can bring this, maybe, maybe uh, bring it up to that point. And then you'll have to figure out exactly like how you're going to connect it so you could actually come maybe even to here and bring it up on a vertical that actually kind of works pretty nice there yeah that that works because it goes with the uh and the use, uh, and use that center line to bring down the neck yeah okay that's one aspect of how we saw that one and now the cheek you say should be extended the left the right cheek yeah I, I like what you're doing with the cheek the high cheekbones here how they're coming mm -hmm. out of the face um, right that's also making it look a little more Asian but All right I, but I don't necessarily think that's a, that's a bad idea because she's Pharaoh so she's not really African even though she's North African right 
mm-hmm. there probably is, I don't know, but there probably is some uh, Asian blood floating around in there somewhere. Well, no, it, that's true. I mean, we all know that. Okay. So, so that, that'll work. All right. So I just don't want to offend any potential Egyptians who were... Uh, yeah, man, I'm offended, man. Who may have... Uh, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Okay, that'll work then. I like the eyelids. I like how that they're small and, and delicate. That they almost feel like they would have to really, really stretch to cover over her eyes. There's something neat about that. Right. Um, I feel like I'm playing makeup. Ah! <laughs> Give her some Egyptian eyeliner. <laughs> <laughs> I right, could do that actually. Come up here, come down, vertical maybe. Yeah, whatever. You play with that, but you gotta mm-hmm. be careful because now she's starting to look like one of those old Asian karate master guys. Yeah. Um, so yeah, man, this is this is going really well. I, I love these lips that you have in here, but before I tell you what I like, um, Anna, speak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So I would also play, I like also the right one, the third one. Uh, except of the cheek, I would like to add that I love I love the skull of the middle one. Like you can see, like the head is dressed on the head, and it's not cut out. Yeah, you're right. It looks. It has a better feeling to it. It's uh, more natural, like you, in the middle you can see the whole skull, even uh, the round uh, at the uh, top. Looks very like, even it's a little bit European. And the second is like cut out from the head. You, s- you think that the one in the middle feels cut out? In On the right side, the oh, third over one. Over here, over here. So it doesn't have the oh, forehead. I got you. Okay, so the hat looks like it comes, it's kind of like, yeah. So that's the problem I had with, with the, the, the skull around the ear. Mm-hmm. You have to cut, cut, I could cut some of the ear off. Make her a little Van Gogh. Yeah, you know, and thereby make it similar to the, to the one t- to, the, to the left of it, or to the right of it. I almost kind of like her with no ears. Then she would be like, I can't hear you. Right, I can feel you. Mm. Okay. Hmm. See, that almost looks very disturbing, but I, I love this one right here. This one on the left for some reason. No, this well, one is okay. On the right one is cut out, like for no forehead, like she. Yeah, I, I don't like out. this one because of the the opposite feeling that you're talking about. Where this one there's no forehead, I, and this one I feel like the hat is coming up over top of the forehead. But like if you zoom in, you see how he has his line here. Let's let's see if we can. Okay, let me get another layer. So he has this line that goes... Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, this uh, this line finishes the whole skull. Yeah. Okay. And if he was able to bring that somehow... Like this... So once you get a lot of a lot of these lines up and you start cleaning up her face, she's gonna look very, 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 very different. I mean, now she's starting to have meat and flesh and and uh... Bill, I I, I don't want to be disrespectful, but I have to do this. 
<laughs> Sorry, man, I just had to do it. Um, so, hmm. I'll tell you, uh, just something to be mindful of with with Asian eyes. If you're when you're doing eyeballs, um, it's not that the eyes are on a slant, okay? People when they draw a lot of Asian eyes, they put them on a, like a, on a slant, they make them kind of like like that. The secret to drawing an Asian eye is to understand that there is a fold of skin from the eye lid that pulls down up over the eye. So where you might have an eye like this, and then then the eye lid comes up here like like this. And you have your eyelashes and your your eye you know your pupil area there. What happens with the Asians is that this eyelid then it kind of comes up over and then turns. And if you add this little hook to, to the eye right in there, it, it brings in this uh, this Asian feel to it. And so that's what's happening down in here with these lines. Is this is coming through and you're pulling the eye down like that. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can either run with it or or try to uh, change it. I like it, especially if she has like an Asian look. But when you go to do values, she's dark skin. Yeah. Then well, that's then, yeah. Go on. That's 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 the the juice of it. Exactly. Yep. She's Blasian. Right. <laughs> Frasian. <laughs> okay. Um, anybody else have any more comments before we move on? No one. No? Okay. So let's go on to the next one. Bill, you did a great job, man. Thank you. Um, think about what you want to do for next week. Which of the three you're going to grab. Um, I'm fine with either, although my preference is this one over here for some reason. But since the group said this one, um, I, <laughs> I think you probably might want to grab that one and run with it. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll develop them. Yeah, or at least do both, you know. Yeah, we'll, we'll develop them and see what happens. I like this one because it reminds me of a sculpture, like almost like the face, even the beard, and, and this part here almost could be like pounded out in one piece of gold you know like it's kind of it, it's it's a singular piece as opposed to the others seem to be connected by different parts yeah it has you know the beard and then the hat and then the face there's something about this one that kind of makes it feel like it's all all one but you did a great job man cool thank you thank you thank you All right. Um, if you guys want to leave a couple comments, you can on the on the site. I know uh, we just did um, a little conversation comment, but you can. So it's fine if you don't want to leave anything in writing. Uh, so who's next? Um, Martin. No, that's the Vision Center. <laughs> oh my bad, my bad. Oh Anna, 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 Anna. Mm -hmm. You're next, Anna. Are I you know. ready? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Over <laughs> Martin, Martin's like, oh, no, I'm not next. No, I don't. Do <laughs> what you talking about, man? I don't want to be cutting. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. I think those last two were the same, right? No. No, I just applied uh, this paper, Tr yeah. trans blah 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 paper on the painting. That sounds like uh, Hotel Transylvania. Yeah, I don't okay. say blah 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 blah. Tracing paper. <laughs> okay. And so you could see the change. If it's not necessary, then drop it. Now we're going to 
going to take a look at a model. Okay, so which one uh, came first? Uh, this one came first. Yeah, that's the one. Are they all in the right order? Hmm? No, this one no, came no, no, no. second. This one right? was first, yes. And this one was last. And then tracing paper, and then tracing paper by itself. No, 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 this is the second. No, yeah, exactly. Like that? Yes. And this was the last one. Yeah. It looks better here on Photoshop than on the paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and just talk about this one over here first. Um, just so we don't get distracted. Let's do this real quick. Mm -hmm. By the way, the first one doesn't look that bad because the main idea was in wings. Because they hide, they turn into a bat. And that. Um, Have you ever heard of the story uh, of the the Hunchback of Notre Dame? Of course, I even read it. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody heard that. Um, I heard the other day that at the end of that story. Happy ending. Well, Disney made it like a you know an ending where. Uh, okay. he, he gets basically, um, uh, he lives in the tower, and, mm -hmm. and Ismerelda gets the blonde hair guy. Yeah, what would they show to children, like he dies? No, I think he just goes and kind of like lives by himself with the, with the little statues. Um, but I believe oh, in the no. book, at the end, mm -hmm. he actually transforms into an angel. No, like he transforms he, into dust. At the end of the book? Like some, but yeah, th like they saw two, two, two dead bodies, like one uh, hugging another, very, very like strong. And when they wanted to take the woman away, it just fell apart like dust. That's horrible. Yeah, true. They would not show this to children. That's called composition. They change something, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so why don't you explain your concept? The idea. Your idea. The concept is that the hunchback has wings inside. So the motion is not outside of him, but must be uh, inside. Like uh, the wings are hiding in his back. So, and I wanted to show the process how they are closing inside and turn into this okay. person. And so with this one, <clears throat> this was your first attempt and you were really focusing on a vertical. Um, mm. So why does it work or why does it not work? It's intuitively. <laughs> like I was focused mainly on wings and I didn't make, I didn't, uh, I was not intended to point hands, legs or whatever. I would even lose them. Like I would paint a shape of something, mm -hmm. like a shape of the person, right? But wings people would see and would see like um, the angel, the body itself transparent. And then they would see the, the dark object, I mean person, mm -hmm. which is the result of transformation. Okay. We're going to make a rule in the academy. Okay, and I'm going to set the rule, and you guys are going to try to break it, but if you don't, then the rule stands. And the rule is this, if you're trying to communicate and you're focusing on representation to communicate your idea, then you're, it's not going to work. Okay, so if you want to try to... Um, illustrate or communicate a transformation between let's say in this case the hunchback and the angel right that the angels coming out of the hunchback or the wings are coming out of the hunchback um, and you focus on the wings to communicate the idea then you're not focusing on the design okay so if if, if you guys want to try to 
you know, I don't know what the right phrase is, prove me wrong, quote unquote, whatever, go ahead and, and I'll eat the humble pie. But um, over the years, I've just found that if you focus on the design to actually tell the story, not the representation, it works. So that when you do the wings, the wings become part of the design. Um, but but what makes it successful is, is, is the design. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So now um, Anna did a second option. And this one... You see the two next to each other? Uh, Mitta, let me ask you, which one do you like better? Which one's more powerful? Uh, I think the diagonal one, the second one. All right, wow, that took you really, really long to figure to, to, to say that. Um, I'm just joking with you. No, <laughs> uh, and is that what you mean by when you say that the overall design has to work rather than one component of it? Yep. Okay, I get it. See, now, yeah. like, when you look at it, you don't even know what you're looking at, but it just feels right. It, it, and then when you look at the representation, ah, now you have context. You know how to place it. So, um, but but I just think, I think this is very, very powerful. Uh, Anna, do you want to share your story behind this one? Like, what you think works about it and what, what, it's what's more... not working? It shows more action, let's say, like they fly inside instead of falling. Okay, so in this one it looks like an angel's falling into and, and turning into the hunchback, which almost looks like a curse, right? But the angel fell from heaven and, and landed on earth as this hunchback. Th this way, there's, there's much more of a deliberate action of something. We don't know if it's good or bad yet. Um, so Martin, when you look at this, what are, what are you feeling? Oh, there's definitely a thrust. I mean, it, like you said, there's still not a complete story. Like you don't, you're not sure if it's going out or in, but something's happening. Like there's movement going on. Or the first one, it was kind of like you said. There's no. Well, it, it's still left up in the air. Mm -hmm. Quite literally, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the second one I liked. Even when you first brought it up, my attention just went straight to that. You know, like that was boom. Yeah. That's when you started hitting Anna right there. Bam. So now you put some tracing paper over this one, Anna, and um. Oh, hold on one second. There we are. And what and and with this one, what were you trying to do with the tracing paper? Uh, here, I wanted to concentrate the attention of the viewer on his uh, on his back, actually, uh -huh. and to show that the notion goes inside of his back, and it's important. For and then uh, I also used. Um, Horizontals and vertical, so I changed his ha uh, his uh, hand, mm -hmm. uh, so he's not. It's more like it gives us horizontal line. Um, whatever. Now I wanted to repeat, like to show the triangle, mm -hmm. uh, which forms also his um, wings. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, these wings here. And yeah. they're kind of opening up, and then... Yeah, but um, this is strange where they open up. Mm -hmm. Like, they have to close. This is doubtful. Hey, Bill, what, what are your thoughts on these, between the two? Well, I think that the, the image on the left, I think that's definitely, it shows action, but then it, what it does for me also, it shows that you have two images that are, like, dive-bombing, then you have one that's hovering and has to break the, the fall because he's going so fast. If you hit the man, you probably drive him into the ground. So I like that. And I, I like that it's that dominant vertical thing. As Martin says, it really shows action. Mm -hmm. and it's, uh, it gets right to the point. It, you know, it's, it's, um, 
I, I like your your transcendent idea, uh, and it's very nice. I, I like that. Thank you. And then here. This is the tracing paper without the other sketch on the bottom. Correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. So... so Here, I think maybe it will help also to, to show, to open the story, if I will add him some kind of... Um, wings on his back no. or, or or I will drop some feathers on his back or no, 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 him. no, 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 you're talking representation, you're thinking I'm going to make it work, you're, what you're saying is it's not working, so the solution has to be adding more visual information in terms of uh, feathers or wings representation, right? The, the solution isn't representation, the solution is design. So how can you design it better to make it communicate better? That's kind of like saying, this sentence I wrote isn't working, so let me add more words. Right? Instead of maybe focusing on the composition or the rhythm of the words that you have or, you know, or editing the words. Um, so, can I ask a question, Anna? Mm -hmm, yes, sir. The last one that Victor has on the right. What 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 message are you? Can I mean? What? How are you saying your message with that image? Like they are more uh, straightforward for towards him, and then I thought that why would the last one, like let's say the lowest angel open his wings um, when he's going like inside of him, like stopping the motion, like it, it, like open wings for the bird is like stop, they just stop it. See like, like the one before that, see th this one here you have, that I, can, that I can pick up, you have two angels. It and actually must be the one angel that is in the, like, so I would say that I would make, uh, go with, use tones to show that it's a one, but it goes brighter, 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 and goes into the darkest tone. Like, with colors, I would use also the, with tones values, I would also use the, the sense of action also from low from like from lightest to darkest. Right, but 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 right now we just have we just have the composition. Right. <laughs> and so and so what I what I'm what I'm what I'm trying to get across is like for me the one before this conveyed it has had meaning and I could I could understand what you were saying. This one here, it seems like there's some type of stylized knife or something just drilling into the guy's back. Uh, the the one on the right here. Yeah, because I really yeah. can't, I really can't, I can't distinguish that as being that angel that was that was holding ground and the one before. It, it this made, is the one before. No, is it? Uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. The one before. Well, this is one of them. But see how the the, the, the the image on the left, the angel is pausing. You can, I can identify, I can say, oh, that's an angel. Look how he's coming down. He's coming down real fast. And he floats over. He hovers over this guy. And I said, oh, I, I see. I don't want him to stop over him. I want him to go inside. Uh, but, but Anna, um, the reason why this one is important <laughs> over this one is this one looks like a, a it feels more like a violent thrust that's coming to beat him down right oh, okay. so it this one you have to have the hover and it may not be a hovering of an angel but what's happening is you have the violent thrust down right and then you have this 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 mer this change a shift and mm -hmm. it brings a level of peace the contrast of this piece 
and that violent thrust, and then you see him, it makes you feel like this isn't a punishment, that this is a blessing of some sort. This one almost looks like, you know, it's, it's almost like a judgment coming down on, to, on top of this fella here. And this one looks like the angel may have fallen and turned into this, into a creature, right? <laughs> so having this juxtaposition of this violent thrust down on an angle, this peace, this moment of, of peace, of, of, of stillness, it creates this nice transition between him, between the two of them. Now, notice this, guys. She changes the arm here and versus here, where this arm almost falls right in line with the arm of the angel and up through that diagonal. Mm. It mm -hmm. connects the angel to him. He becomes one unit. Here, yeah. by, by changing just that arm, and we're not talking about an arm, we're talking about an angle. By, by removing that angle, now he's separated from, from this. He's not one with it. And so this becomes an antagonist, uh, like, a, like, a, like a foe, not a friend. This becomes much more of a friendly relationship. This is much more of a conflict. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I'll, I'll offer up a suggestion here, since I'm a nice guy. <laughs> One thing that we could do, okay, we know that this arm works, so we want to keep that arm going all the way through, okay? That's going to connect whatever this element up here is to him. Um, with this arm here, we might want to repeat that and make make sure that this arm, you know, kind of comes comes here like this. Hold on. Okay, and then the bottom of his hand arm comes on through here like so. Okay, this also then allows you to have this big hunchback shape. Now the hunchback shape is going to be very important, and if you want the angel to transform into the hunchback, then you have to make the eye feel that. So here's two suggestions. One, start here, come around with your hunchback curve, right, come down through the leg. And then somehow have an arabesque that comes down and wraps up through him. Okay? Mm -hmm. You see how now your eye is moving? Whatever energy is up here is now flowing into him. So that's one, one way of doing it. The other way could be... Um, what if I will turn them around? Like one will look to the right side, left side, right side. And... Uh, well, as long as... If you just turn them to the right and to the left and the right and the left, that's okay, but it has to tie together. Mm, so, okay. what you could do is maybe come out the other way, and you know, and this could be a wing, this could be a wing, and this could be a wing. You see how that movement, now it feels like he's tumbling and turning, and now he's transitioning into, and you could even have this energy come out, out here. So now Do when you record you, this? Yeah, it's oh. being recorded. Hopefully it works. Okay. So I hope I will hear it, or I should uh, make notes. Um, so now when you draw on top of it, you have a plan. So now you know, okay, I'm going to put a wing here. See, now now you're drawing the wing, but, but the design came before the wing, right? So mm -hmm. now if we have this wing coming here, we want to mimic that. Well, now we know we can put a wing here. Okay, we can put a wing here, and maybe the feathers come down on this wing here. He comes up because he's breaking that fall, because we know that works. Okay, and then he's coming through here. Um, maybe his head's coming through here. Okay, so now, now, now your eye is going boom into in, into him. I don't like that it's coming up over top of him and into him. So I think it should come from the bottom. something like this a little bit more. 
Right, because that way you could, you could go back up again to the top. Exactly, and then repeat that. So now, now what we can do is do a radiating um, uh, armature. So we can re kind of, I'm mean, not armature, an arabesque. So we can kind of come repeat this. So now we have this beautiful flow. And that's going to give you that feeling that it's not just this direct BAM, you know, but it's this graceful descension transformation that's going on in, in here. And you can actually have it curve mm -hmm. up and then come down into that arm. So it's it's basically like this. <sighs> he lands. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where that transition where the angel changes into the hunchback this is the earth this is the heaven this is where the transformation happens and now his head is here his leg he has a little tongue ah! and um sorry <laughs> and then you can plot your your wings somewhere that makes sense okay so maybe you take this arc and you, you plot it in there you take this arc and you plot it in here somehow. Maybe this one goes here, this one goes here, and the last one is a combination of the two. Victor? Yeah. Is this similar to doing the leaves on the vine? Um, you, you could look at it that way. I mean, it's, it's, it's a way of visual, visually seeing it because those little the wings are like, are like leaves on the vine. The vine is the arabesque. Yeah. And then he becomes kind of like the seat at the bottom. Yeah. But you want to play around with this movement. You may even want to make it more dramatic. Boom. So this becomes a little more like what you're thinking in terms of, of a closed and then it's kind of opening up into the into the angel and that way it doesn't look like you have 10 angels you really only have one angel but this this formation of the angel he's kind of materializing <coughs> so you might have light up here like you're saying light values light lines and as it gets down here he's starting to form himself a little bit more mm -hmm. and now you see how I came out here that's drawing your eye over there that doesn't work so maybe his head needs to be over here and he's looking at the hunchback and the wings you see this angle here so let's repeat that angle you see this beautiful shape that's being formed in the center ah how rude Okay, see this beautiful shape that's being formed there? Um, this space that's going to cre be created between the angel and the hunchback is going to be super, super important. Because that's where the magic is going to happen in the painting. Um, let me show you here. That's why we keep talking about this rest. There's like this magic this this heaven here this earth here and then you have this co connection that is that is um connecting the two like that design element is so powerful okay i was actually i taken his uh let's say be belly or uh, his uh, leg mm -hmm. curve I was uh, even wrote it on the hun hunchback. Oh, okay. You can you can see it. I made it already. Like his head, mm -hmm. uh, hand, and his like with the S. So and it was repeated in each an angle angel. Mm, in okay. each angel. So you could see that they are repeating and they are the one. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they are confronting. I, I need um, be friends more with him.
So if you have that, what you could do is possibly find a point here and come up to this point here. Let's do it this way. If this becomes a point, right, we have this line here. So we're doing radiating points. We have his head here, his ass here, mm -hmm. his leg here. Um, let's put his other arm here. Um, his foot here. Now we could put inside here a head of the angel here, another head between these two, another head up here, you know, and start composing it within this almost like a grid itself. Um, if we bring in the wing, the wing. No, 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 no. I'm sorry, but no. Like what we did on the first video that we did with fighters, and I was present there, it's important which side the curve is. When the side is backwards, like leaning to the star, mm -hmm. then all the all action goes up. And when the curve goes down, like, yeah, like this, then... Like the light goes, like you, you make the can, I don't know, like uh, how you paint, like then they go down, like the sand. It gives them the different feeling. Hmm. So the problem with this is that if we're designing too much on the vertical, I mean on the di diagonal, Okay. It's starting to feel like the angel is covering him, like he's sad or whatever. The angel, the angel's there to comfort him. It doesn't feel like he's transforming into him, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's where the the arc the arabesque is going to be the solution ultimately. Okay. Because it's easier to make an angel like escaping from the body and goes upside. Nobody did. I, I've never seen, I should probably check also any artist, maybe famous or non-famous, who already m made that issue or that, um, that problem mm -hmm. when somebody wants to put an angel inside the person and not make angel ex escape the body. Just be careful when you Google angel inside of a person. <laughs> you might get a lot of videos you don't like. <laughs> now, now oh. Victor, Victor, like, when she, right now she's on the diagonal, and that's creating a very, to me, a very uh, masculine energy. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you do the arabesque, then it becomes more feminine. Right. That's interesting. So if you could do the arabesque for the feminine part of the angel, and then use a combination. Um, let's do the um, like a lot of the diagonals. Ah. <gasps> Down in here. That's interesting because now that's again showing a transition of space right so right. the arabesques are up in your heaven everything that's earth hunched back you know uh is now these very hard straight lines but somehow you need maybe one straight line that goes through maybe like the arm of the angel into the arm of him to connect the two and then his hump may be the only real curve you have which then mimics which resonates with the, the, the arabesque and the curves that are in the angel. And then obviously when you get into value, um, then that's pretty simple because then you're going to have this very dark area, this very light area. Um, the angel is ultimately going to go from...
dark to uh, light to dark. Yeah, exactly. And then he will be thirsty. Sure. <laughs> They would go to like uh, ghost, not ghost, spirit. From spirit to person, more, right. and, more and meat see, and bones. In the classical sense, that's what you're doing with the arabesque. It's coming from the spiritual, you know, the heavenly to the earthly. Well, and that's, when when you think of the word spirit, think about animation, right? Because that's what a spirit is. It's definition of a spirit is the is the is the energy that animates an idea, um, a thought, an, uh, an action, whatever it is, right? So, in this realm up here is the animation. It's 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 where all the movement happens. The transitioning happens. The crossing over happens here, and then the manifestation happens in his body. Um, and so this probably down here wants to be very hard and rigid and confined. And up here, it's it's the stirring of this idea. Yeah, the question also, I didn't think about the base here. The so what? maybe it, the base behind, like behind angels, maybe I would use this arabesque with the base foreground. Okay. Base, <laughs> I, my, my English is so poor. So like, um, what would I, I'm very concentrated on angels themselves, so I don't see, I didn't make any earth here, mm -hmm. no, no, I, I, and I don't know whether it would be a forest or you know, sky it, and it, earth. So it doesn't something. matter. At yeah, but it would. No, it will matter because it holds also the composition itself. Well, you got to figure out the composition. Then it doesn't matter if you make it trees or a city or, or whatever. It um, also help to read. Like what I see is uh, because it's very hard now to express all the idea in, in, um, in objects and subjects. But mm -hmm. what I see that I should use also the base. Yeah, how it's called. <laughs> saying the base, the base, um, the base, the background, the, the, oh, the yeah, background, the background. background. <laughs> <laughs> the background. I could use the background to help me to show. Sure. Now, now, when you do it, you want to make sure that it's it's helping the composition and helping support it. But don't work on the background with the hope that it's gonna it's gonna make the composition work. So it needs to work with the with these two people, uh, these two elements, the angel and the and the and the hunchback. Mm -hmm. And then your background can help support it and give more context. But um, it has to work at this level. And this isn't easy. Um, oh, Martin, is that you? No. <laughs> I, know. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I would ask you for understanding. My daughter is ill, and I have to put her again to bed. Yeah, we so we, we, we we don't yeah. understand. Um, we have no children. <laughs> <laughs> All okay. right. Um. Okay. So you're gonna go take care of her. Sure. Okay. And I think I'm. I'm not sure. Should I come back, or it's over, or what? Uh, we're still going to do Martin. So if you want to come back, and if we're still on, you're welcome to join us. And if we're not on, then we'll say good night. Okay, then just don't turn me turn me off. I will just put my headphones over here. I will come back. Okay. I will not. Thank you. All right. So um, let's go ahead and bring up Martin's work. Uh, Mitta, what are you thinking? Um. I'm just speechless. I, I think uh, I, I love this. I love her idea. I mean, it's, it's, it's really beautiful. And I, I've been just listening quietly to the arabesque and all those kind of things. So, um, y you know, there are very small pieces in every art. And I think sometimes we kind of maybe notice them subtly. But I'm beginning to realize how much they matter as to what we see and how it looks. That's awesome. I, I love. Yeah, but I love but I think but I think Anna's idea is awesome. I mean, uh, 
it's it's a very beautiful place. That's why we have to be hard on her. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it really is beautiful, and. Um, um, I saw a picture of um, some kind of a rocket launch a few days back, uh -huh. and an a piece kind of reminded me of that. So it had that this you know big curve of the rocket which is coming down, and <coughs> I'll send the picture to you, Victor. And awesome. it comes down and it hits, hits the ground, and it, there's four four points of light which are radiating. Um, so her piece just reminded me of that that picture because I, I don't I don't draw so much but I look at photographs and things like that so that's awesome that, that, that's uh so you're saying that the rocket came down like this uh, it, it's almost like a like a big curve yeah from from the back it, the picture had depth so from the back there's a big curve which is coming down on the front yeah yeah something and like then that it, sh it, it shoots account. off into yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yes. <laughs> that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, because in, in Anna's piece, maybe maybe the the uh, instead of having those real hard uh, diagonals, you could have radiating points of showing that he's he's been energized. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but I really like a concept of, you know, a uh, kind of uh, contrast between angel and something which is turning it into a hunchback. It's, it's very interesting. <laughs> One idea is maybe having the hunchback, let's say here's his little hand, and really pushing that hunch up, like on a diagonal, almost like he's being lifted up off the ground, because the thrust of that angel... Is, is, you know, well, that's that's why he has a hunch back. Well, yeah, because it, that's that's the whole idea is that the wings are are tucked up underneath the the, the flesh. Yeah. <clears throat> and and she's making the challenge because it's really easy to have the hunch back, and then and then having you know making it look like there's an angel sprouting from him, right? Right. But she wants to go the other way and actually show the angel turning into the hunchback. And, uh, and that's a lot more difficult. <laughs> All right, Martin, let's rock and roll. I think you got the wrong one up, though. How rude. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Good stuff. Oh yeah, that was totally different. <laughs> yeah, you, you took it out there, Martin. You took it out. Yeah, that line layer, man. I was just sitting there looking. I'm like, how am I gonna do this? And I just waited till the end of the week. I said, you know what? All right, fine. Let's just do it. Did you write that resonating lines? By hand? Uh, no, that's type. That's that's in Photoshop. Okay. <laughs> I was like, dang, man. <laughs> All right, Brahim. Okay, so, uh, like I said, I, I waited till the last moment to to go ahead and do these because I I was trying to figure out how how am I gonna tell a, a, a story around having the headphones on. And to me, it was very, you know, to me, when I have my headphones on, it's very, you know, it's very sacred. There's just music that just captures me. Yeah. 
Mm. So I was looking at a pictures of uh, cathedrals and corridors. So I said, you know what? Let me add that to the background and then just compose it from there. And then I went to the, the repeating lines. Mm -hmm. And I started out, yeah, that one. Just kind of just getting the basics in there, just getting the pillars in there and then looking at the main arches and then just bringing it down because he's looking down like it's down from the heart. You know, it's like a, it's getting very soulful. Yeah. So what I wanted to do is bring its attention coming down. So I just brought all my lines repeating towards down to its face and then down toward, I mean, even his shirt is going down and everything just kind of going down that way. Um, then on the second one, radiating lines, I made my focal point right at the center at the bottom like right below his chin and just basically through all my lines focusing back onto that point um but then i forgot there was my vertical wasn't there so i added inside the pillars something a vertical line just to give it you know tie it back in mm -hmm. and then on the last one the resonating lines um I decided to go with the angles the on the pillars and on the ceiling and then keep him very straight and boxed out so I think I did a good job I was fearing to critique a little bit <laughs> oh wow uh, Bill what, what are your thoughts well, you know, nice work. I, my, my overall feeling is that I don't see things going down. I see them resonating from the from the chest up. Oh, fair enough. I mean, I, I just see. I mean, for me, it, it's like this energy is expanding from the chest, expanding from the back of the head, you know, going up into the head. That's what I see. I I, I don't see things coming down. I see them going up. Yeah. No. What I was figuring too is like I'm still not even at that the last layer, and once the last layer in, I can bring in the gradients and start, you know, what I'm saying tying them in to bring them down. Yeah. Because on on the re, on the repeating lines, you can see I was trying to make it like the lights coming from his heart up, but you can't tell by that by just seeing the lines. It's either going to be coming in or or out. But still, you know, you can't see that quite yet. I didn't want to. I'm sorry. I didn't want to. I didn't want to bring too much shading or any of that in yet because it's still, you know, still the line layer. So. Exactly. Uh, Mitchell, what, Mitchell, what, what are your your thoughts? Um. No, I, I, I like all of them. I, th I think it's very beautiful. I think the one which is striking to me most is the lower center one. I'm not, s yeah, that one, I'm not so much able to, yeah, but I, I would agree with Bill that it's looking more like going from down to up. It's almost like a hal halo around his head. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying in that one. Uh, the other ones, I think they're looking a little bit more static to me, like, there's a little bit more, uh, uh, not 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 very dynamic, like the, the more. What what should I say? Maybe more hori horizontal and vertical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, 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 did he has he written something under those? I'm not able to see the ones on the bottom. Now what it is is he has a photo. He laid it out on the grid. He took the grid off. Has the line drawing, and then here it says repeating lines. So what he's doing is repeating these lines through here, and okay. then, does, then he's repeating the verticals. Here he's using a radiating point or radiating line. So right about here mm -hmm. is where all these lines radiate from. Uh, okay. I see. I see. From and, one point. Okay. And these are resonating lines. So inside the body and inside the face, he's using horizontal and verticals, and then ev all around him, he's using diagonals. So, so Victor, if I might ask, how is the resonating lines different from the repeating ones? 
uh, well, the resonate the resonating lines is basically a juxtaposition of one subject against another. So the background is one subject, and okay. they're all diagonals, and he's all constructed with verticals and horizontals. I see. I see. Um, my favorite one out of all of these, Martin, is this one here, the top right. Yeah, because well, I'm still sticking to that one. <laughs> okay. And what I see with this one is I see these very two strong diagonals that come to the center of the head, mm -hmm. and then I see the this coming down through here. Um, and so there's this energy that goes right inside the face, but for some reason, I think maybe because of these strong horizontals, and then you have the strong vertical. Mm -hmm. my, my attention goes right into the center of the head right here where you're mm -hmm. listening to the music and then this almost feels like it's radiating out almost like uh, the vibe of the music yeah. so when you said that the music is like a cathedral that to me makes absolute sense <laughs> and you know, I was at a diner today sitting there for two and a half hours writing and whatever just having my headphones on it was like the heat was on my face the snow was outside i was in my little zone even though mm -hmm. i was out in public it felt mm -hmm. exactly like this man yep. that's so, my story <laughs> so i think you um absolutely successful with this piece uh, i think you're playing with things down here um and it's kind of cool that you're trying to make it work my concern is that you're really not except for here where you're actually modifying the design. Mm -hmm. These are much more just patterns that you're using. You're not really um, using uh, repeating lines or, or, or resonating lines. You're kind of much more using uh, patterns. Because you see, if you're using vertical lines and horizontals here, well, you're also using horizontals and verticals in here, okay? Mm -hmm. You're also bringing this horizontal element through the eyes, but that's not happening up here, right? So yeah. I like the noise, the music that goes on in here, this rhythmic boom, 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 going <laughs> on in here. And then down here is very, there's, there is no music down here. Yeah. You know, and then there's a little bit of a rhythm. And then it's a, you know, just layers and layers yeah. of music. So I, I, I think you take this. I would like for you to actually uh, rethink the mouth. I think the mouth is about, it's just way too long. It's coming to the center of his eye. I think it should come to the beginning of his eye, the start of his eye. Let okay. me bring that up. So maybe um, <laughs> well, you know, if you do that, Victor, it, it has a different, um, it conveys a different message. When you reduce the size of the mouth? Yeah. Okay, explain. Well, if you look to the one to the left of that one you reduce, it's like a sense of being, is it bliss? Mm -hmm. It's really a supreme feeling. And if you reduce that, it's he hasn't got to that point yet. Yeah, he's like contemplating, am I there or am I not? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, he's waiting for something to happen. But and the other one, I agree. Already, yeah. What were you saying? He's already there. Yep, I agree. I was trying to figure out if there's a way. <clears throat> Oh, that's cool. If there's a way we can 
maybe take that. Okay. I'm the Joker. <laughs> yeah. He just ate some apple pie. Okay, so if we pop in. It's Neo. Okay, so now. What if we take what if we cut the diagonal just a little bit? Or the vertical. Yeah, the vertical on the original. Maybe by half. Okay. You mean the, that's going up? Oh uh, zoom into the mouth? I mean this diagonal here, cut it about halfway. Yeah, on each side, that little. Oh. So it's right at the bottom of the nose, and then bring these down. Your little cheeks. <laughs> Yeah, see, to me that feels better. That feels right. Um, like, for some reason, I just think that smile's getting way too out of hand, too long. Yeah, because that was that was on that radio radiating. So like, he yeah. just looked funny. <laughs> but you know, when you showed me the 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 eclipses, that's when I was like, oh, that's, you know, that's what gave me the idea of the cathedral as well, because it's, you know, it's resonating. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. like, there's there's vibration. So yep. that's, I, that's where my challenge was for the line, is like, okay, how do I still convey that, but through line? But if, even the way you have it now, there's still a difference. Mm -hmm. And the way you have it now is maybe perhaps more of a reverence a more of a um, uh, pensive connectivity. Yeah. So the other one is like, you know, he's like, it's it's more, uh, you know, like it's more like uh, public. You know, it's more like it's, it's not sacred. Uh huh. Yeah. And I think that's when I get to the curve layer. It's gonna really. I mean, it, it, that's just what Victor showed me before. It just started popping, making sense to me as far as what what my story is behind it. Because that the line, I mean, it, it it was tough, but it was it was it was fun to do. It, it's showing me different things. This is beautiful, man. I mean, and you just feel it like you feel like the head, the cathedral. I mean, the background is an extension of him. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not placed in a background. He is the background. Yeah, it's all together. Bing! That's gorgeous, man. Thank you. <laughs> um, just be careful when you do these backgrounds. Like, if you're going to do this repeating cathedral, you see how you have this type of de um, Yeah, yeah, I see it. I looked out. I was like, oh, I missed. Like, something changed. So you, you have this, and then here it's just boom. This isn't as pretty as this. So you either make them all the same. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to make them all the same, I would go and make them like this. There's just something basically bringing this in here and then coming up with another one. Yeah. 
Yeah, I even like the one that was in the radiating lines. The one that had the diagonal going down. Yeah, like this? Yeah. Actually, you're, you're saying they're going down. They're not going down. You know, they're, they're going up. <laughs> yeah, because the radiating lines is actually a radiating point. So, um, so here's the point, and then everything's shooting out from it. Yeah. Okay. So they're coming from here out. They're radiating out. All right, man. You did a beautiful job, dude. So that's the uh, that, that's the deco look. Our deco is our deco based upon radiation. I have no idea, but I totally feel what you're talking about in terms of uh, this design and the art deco. Yeah, if you look, if you look at the at the pieces, it always seems like it fans out from the center. Ah, okay. I know at the Empire State Building they have that. Yes, yeah, it's like that exactly. Oh yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. This is very Mexican-ish. Skull. Yeah, yeah that's like <laughs> they are the mutos. <laughs> <laughs> so my two favorites are this one, and by far, this is my favorite. And this is really where you're to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is kind of getting into texture. And Norman Rockwell said he doesn't think about texture or color until his drawing and his, and his design is perfect. So uh, Michelangelo said design, the science of design or line drawing. Um, and so that's what we're doing here. We're dealing with line drawings. <laughs> and... Uh, so, Victor, is, is there any significant difference? We spoke. I spoke before about about two dimensional, three dimensional composition. Is there any difference in that when we use the grids? Um, the grids are used to bring order to your work. So, if your intention is to have a three dimensional design, it will still be useful. Um, it really just depends on what it is that you're uh, trying to communicate. In this case, he this is a two-dimensional design. It kind of feels like it's being sucked back into a space, right? So mm -hmm. you kind of have that three-dimensional feel. And it's coming out here, but the intention wasn't to actually bring us into the music. It was to show he was in the music. And so this was designed to go around him and through him, not for us to feel like he's in there and we're also in there as well. Um, unless I'm totally wrong on that, Martin. No, you got it. That's, yeah, it's, okay. it's more, you know, like say, when you're at the coffee shop, you're just in that. You got the headphones on. Ain't exactly. So we're observing <laughs> this guy who's in his own sacred space. He's yeah. not invited us into that sacred space. And because we're not invited in, he's not designing on a three-dimensional level. He actually wants us to feel separated, that we're observing him in his own space. And that own space is two-dimensional. So once he opens that up and, and intentionally tries to invite us into it, then then he's designing three-dimensionally. And, and now I want to be careful in saying that because a lot of times people will think three-dimensional designing is um, <clears throat> well I have a, a, a square or a triangle or a circle and those are two-dimensional shapes and three-dimensional designing would be taking that, that square and turning it into a cube or a cone or a pyramid or an ellipse so now these are not shapes anymore they're forms so forms are several shapes combined that give you three dimensions or three sides to an object one two three here you would have a a core shadow so that would then give you one two three four sides and and the same up here 
you would have a back, you have a core shadow here, which is one plane, um, you would have a reflective light, which is another, your highlight, and then your regular. So, <clears throat> when most people talk about designing three-dimensionally or two-dimensionally, this is what they're talking about. What we're talking about as composers is something very different, and that is if I have baby Jesus here and little Miss Mary here and little Joseph and the little animals, you know, a little star of David, you know, I'm kind of composing everything around him like this, right? But if I want to be invited into that scene, well then, then I can begin to design it very differently. So now I'm designing three-dimensionally, like this is bringing me in. So now maybe little baby Jesus is there, you know, and Mary's here, Joseph's here, the animals are here. You know, maybe you have a little three wise men guy here, and I'm standing here, you know. Like, there's a place for me in that space. Does that make any sense? Oh, yeah, right. And in a way, that's what Anna was saying about what uh, she calls the uh, the base, the background. How, how do you mean? Well, because, you know, some of the composition's tight. You know, now she has a background. So I think that's what I've heard of think, trying to think that you can invite people in. Uh, okay, I, I didn't hear that. And, and, and her piece doesn't work for a three-dimensional feel. Oh, it doesn't? Okay. No, because it's about this angel turning into this guy. It has really nothing to do with the observer. We're just watching as, you know, as we're driving by. We're watching this thing that, that just happened, but it really doesn't involve us. It's not... So a two-dimensional piece is a voyeur piece. If you take the background away, it will not be inviting us. It has nothing to do with, quote-unquote, the background. It has to do with the design. So you don't need a background. You could just use the people. Um, so let, let me bring up a Caravaggio painting, because the Carge man was pretty good at this. Um, I don't know how to spell his name. Um, Caravaggio? C A V A G G I O. Okay. So you can see here how he has this curve going through the arms. Yeah. And then there's an open area. Well, what that open area is is for you to to bring up a seat and sit down okay. and have dinner with him. Right, okay. right, right, right. Um, here's another more famous one. Again, I mean, the only background in here is a wall, but you can see this line is extending out. Mm -hmm. Here it comes oh, in, yeah. and then it comes through, <laughs> and then this comes through. So you're, if you're standing over here, you're not part of the, you're not part of this conversation. But if you walk over, all of a sudden, when you're right in this area, you're, you're sucked in. You're, 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 pick up a seat and sit down with Jesus, and, and you have to remember that during the Baroque time during this time there was a transition in the church they were going from the Catholics to the Lutherans right and so there was a during this time there was a lot of, of advances in in technology for what we would call spirituality right so you had a printing press which then brought the gospel to peep to, to the masses so you didn't have to have a guy hand write the book, you know, and only the monks knew what it was. Um, the paintings were opened up. They were huge paintings because the point was to invite the common people. They were called genre, I think, genre paintings. Mm -hmm. And they were to actually invite the public into the painting. So it made Jesus much more human. You know, when you look at the Renaissance one, it, Jesus is always surrounded by, like, the Medici's and the kings and the princes and you know and all the, the powerful noble people in the area it wasn't about God being close to man it was really about 
the wealthy people kind of buying art so that they, you know, get close to God, or, or feel like they had a clear conscience. So, so now, this this is more like humanism, would you say? Uh, I don't like that word, but yeah, I guess. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's just a word. I mean, you know, like. Well, I understand, you, but when you say it, there's a lot of context that comes with it. But yeah, I know. But I not, would agree with you. Yes. For, we're throwing that out, just saying this is more humanism, where people now are encouraged to get into the work and into the to be more human, not exactly. not some guy on top that we can't talk to. Absolutely, and that was the whole point. Also, the music at the time changed. You know, before then, it's kind of funny. Bach was known as a as a quote unquote believer, right? Mm -hmm. And he was the first to play piano with all five fingers. Before then, you only played with three fingers. <laughs> really? Yeah. So, um, so it's kind of funny when you study like church history. When you have these what they call big movements of God, there's all this technology that's released into the earth, and and it happens around the same period of time. So. Um, during this period of time, there was this huge movement of, you know, this spiritual shift going on, and then related with that, science boomed as well, and and all kinds of neat things uh, that happened. So you, you see the art changed, the music changed, the way that people did literature changed, all that kind of stuff. The culture shifted. Mm -hmm. So, but um, and one of the developments was was doing these baroque style paintings where you actually designed it three dimensionally to bring people into the into these oh, okay. uh, here I'll show you one by Rubens which is brilliant called the prodigal son so uh, so that that was the the justification or the need for three dimensional work I don't know. I would say a movement because they're trying to bring people into the church, you know. Whereas, like you said before, people are just kind of observing, like, "Oh, you're 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 kicking dirt," you know what I'm saying? Well, and, and interesting, I, I don't know if it was necessarily bring people into the church because Luther, his whole premise was to actually get people out of the church, right? Mm -hmm. So it was actually to bring people because when he read this one little scripture that said, you know, that we're saved by grace and not by works. Um, it revolutionized everything. So it was really to bring people into relationship with God rather than into religion and, and things like that. That was the heart of it. Now, I'm not saying it worked or not, but um, it was to, like Bill was saying, was to humanize this spirituality. So it was uh, it was pretty cool. Let me try to find this painting here. Um, the... I'm trying to figure out how to spell it. How do you spell prodigal? Here, we'll do that. P R O D I C A L. P R O D I C A L. Yeah, D I C A L. Okay. Um, maybe it was Rembrandt's. Ah, here we are. I did a huge lecture on this painting in, back in college. It was called the. the the divine design for a divine invitation or something like that it was, it was pretty cool but <clears throat> here the prodigal son returns home and the story is that there's this rich father he he, he gives his kids his, t his two sons like you know money and all this stuff and the one leaves and basically you know spends it on hookers and stupid stuff and he wakes up in the bottom of like this pig pen after I don't know years of being an idiot and he comes home and the father doesn't judge him, he just embraces him, right? And he even gives him the ring of the house and all this stuff. So <clears throat> what's brilliant about this painting is it's three-dimensionally designed. You see this space here? Mm -hmm. That's for you uh, as a prodigal son to come in and kneel in front of the father, you know? So it was designed to show you what to do, but also to invite you into that space. So you can come and sit with Jesus, or you can come and kneel before the Father, or you could, you know, whatever it was, you know. Okay, that being the case, that ties back to our, to composers, because if they consciously compose it that way, then you're, you're trying to give a strong suggestion. You're suggesting to the viewer that's where he should be, if not physically, psychologically. Absolutely. And that's where you're you're designing three dimensionally because now it extends outside of the painting and actually creates a 
a vortex, a space that you actually feel part of it when you're in alignment with it. And if you're not in alignment with it, you don't feel it. I mean, it, it's it's like it's like walking into a room, literally. There's a, a, a spot in, in Savannah, Georgia. Um, it's a... Uh, <clears throat> we have all these little squares everywhere. And um, like little tiny parks. And there's this one that has a bench here. And it has like... Um, if you look down on top of it, right? It has like... Uh, bushes here it has a bench here bench here bench here right and bushes here bushes here bushes here there's a road over here and then there's like this cross that's in the center of it and if you stand right in the center of there and you speak it becomes like an echo chamber like it everything everything echoes hello 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 right because it your voice is bouncing off of the benches and the um, the bushes and everything, and it's designed to give you this weird experience. You you step one step out of that center, <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah. You know, so the Mayans did this. Like if you go down to Taka, like the temple, <clears throat> um, there's a temple that they have. Now I know this because my my ex-wife was uh, Mayan. So they they had they took great pride in telling people these cool things about the temples. So back in the day, there was a king, a very popular, famous king of uh, of the Mayans, and he had a bird, and that bird was called the Teca, and it had these two long feathers, right? So it's like the national bird of Guatemala, and and that thing would fly with him everywhere. Um, that, that was the legend. So when he when he died or whatever, they built this temple or whatever. And if you stand in front of the temple and you clap your hands like this, the the clap will bounce off of the steps and 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 come back to you, and it will make the same exact sound as the bird. It, it's insane. Whoa. You can go on YouTube and, and watch the people do it. Like they clap and it makes it it, it shoots the the sound of the bird back to you. So that that's engineering, but that's also composition and design, you know, I mean, it, or it couldn't work that way. So, um, but we're doing very similar things in, in a painting. We're making people feel something. I mean, that's what you did here, man. You feel the sanctuary. And it's not because you have a cathedral. The cathedral only gives us context, enough context to say, oh, that's what it is. That's the word. But without knowing what that word was, you would still feel the sanctuary, right? Yeah. yeah. Because you designed it for it. So, um, that's some cool stuff, man. Uh, I think that's it. Anna, um, what are your thoughts on this, this piece here? Are you there? Okay, I guess you're not. Um, <laughs> Uh, Mitta, would you yeah. like to go next week? Present something next week? Uh, yes, yes, I think I could do that. <laughs> okay. Um, what What is something that you want to uh, work on? Um, I, I think Victor, I'll I'll get some infographic. I had uh, I had talked about it last time. I think I just need to get that ready. Okay. I'll get infographic. Yeah. Okay. So infographic. All right, uh, Bill. Yes. Um, you want to advance your uh, your grow? Yes. Okay. What do you want me to do? I want you to work on your field, meaning I want you to place her with inside of a rectangle. Okay. I want you to do a final line drawing. And uh -huh. what, I, what that means is I don't want to see um, a million lines. So let me show you what, I, what I'm talking about. Yep. All right. So, like, here you have a million lines. And that's fine because you're still designing. Um, 
but I want to see this and then next to it what I want to see is all of this erased so if we start erasing all of these construction lines she's going to change very 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 drastically right so now you're going to make sure that the lines that you you have um, let me show you here Back up, back up. Uh, hopefully I have enough undoes. Ah, I don't! How rude. Okay. Okay, so you can see here how clean this looks. Now, he still has um, this line here. Let's pop this stuff out. Oops. Yeah, that's just from the, the tracing. No purpose. excuses. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> but you see how just cleaning that up even enhanced it. So now here here's an image with the Vargas grids on it. Um, and all of these little textures and stuff like that, we don't want any of that. We just want a clean line drawing like that. So no values, no, no textures. Um, Oh, that's kind of cool. Looks like she's a little mask. So same here, okay? So whatever your lines are that you're going to keep, keep, but get everything else out of there. Okay? So we okay. can only see the drawing. So that's your goal. And then the field, obviously, is determining what is the, the final rectangle that's around her. We, we need to come up with a theme song for the field. Final rectangle. No, instead of countdown. Um, and so with her, we might want to put in that little. Uh, okay. <laughs> she looks pretty badass, man. <laughs> so no joke. That's right. She's a warrior queen. It. <laughs> Got that right. So those are the two things, uh, final clean line drawing and also um, your field. And, um, and I also want you to find a spot. I want you to keep your signature small. Find a spot where you're going to put your William uh, Jordan. Okay. Now, this is recording, right? It should be. Hopefully, everything works fine. Okay, because I, I couldn't take a screenshot. It won't let me do that. I'll, I'll do one for you just in case. Thanks. All right. So, all right. Uh, Anna, are you there? Anna? Okay. Um, Martin, you're going to go again next week? Mm, sure. Okay, so why don't we uh, get you on the curve layer? Yeah, curve layer. I've been excited to play with those curves for a little while. Yeah. If you behave yourself, they can get very sexy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I heard somewhere where um, the Puritans invented the table skirt because... Um, the table legs were getting a little too risque for their for their eyes to handle. <laughs> All right, here's a good example. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a great example. <laughs> you know, oh, the curves. I can't handle it. So they created these cloths to put around. I mean, look at that. That's gorgeous. Wow, oh. look at that one. Wow! Woo! -hoo -hoo. Okay, sorry, I just went Scooby Doo on you. <laughs> okay. Um, Anna, is that you? Okay, I guess not. So I will go then for number four on uh, next week. Okay, that's Meet is still with us, though, right? Yeah, she's going number one. Anna, I thought there was Anna just got back here. I saw her face. Anna, are you there? Oh, wait, maybe she has her headphones on. 
Let me see. So I, I would rather her go. She didn't shut it off, so she might have gone back to her daughter. Right, okay. Okay, if she wants to go next week, she can. She can take my spot. Um, if 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 she's not going to go, then I will present. Um, and I'm working on <clears throat> the V-Grid layer. And uh, working on my little composition here. So we'll, we'll talk about that next week if, if Anna doesn't go. Um, <clears throat> on that note, this was a great meeting, and I will upload the video to YouTube and, and send it off. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I, I won't send it off. What I will do is actually put it on the website. Okay, so I will add it to the um, to the to the comments here. Okay, great. Okay, sweet. All right, guys, it was awesome. Hey, fantastic. Looking forward to seeing the work next week. Awesome. Oh yeah, Mita. It was well. It was awesome hearing your voice again. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks, Victor. Thanks for including me. Yep. Uh, and thank bye. you very much for showing me all the beautiful work. Thanks. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. Mita. Bye. See you. Bye.